and they refused to allow me to bring witnesses in or have every taped conversation heard. My accusers, ironically, the ones who use some of these tactics, those are the ones who have actually gone into court and have gotten an order from the judge to not release the tapes. They can take out of context snippets of conversations, lie about me, and mislead the public. And I know what you all think when you hear things like, this is effing golden, but you don't hear the whole story, and they lead you to believe these things. It calls into question, calls into question a pattern. Last night, a friend of mine mentioned to me some of the interesting coincidences, or are they coincidences, in terms of the pattern on how the prosecutors operate. Tony Resco, who's been convicted of, of wrongdoing, was a supporter of mine, a supporter of President Obama's, a big contributor to Pat Quinn, to Lisa Madigan, to Mike Madigan, to Alexi Janulius, uh, a political operative in many ways and being involved in campaign fundraising. He did some wrong things. A jury found him guilty of those things. And he's now sitting in a jail cell in the federal correctional facility. I'm told that after he was convicted, they put him in a cell and he's been sitting there. I was told it was in published reports, sitting there for 23 out of 24 hours a day in a cell. If, in fact, that's true, that is shocking to think. Because he wrote a letter to a federal judge before his conviction. And in the letter, which is filed with the court, it was published, although it's interesting how the media didn't really play it up as big as they probably should have, because I think it's a very, very important point to make in view of Chris's, Chris Kelly taking his own life because of the pressure he's under. But Tony Resco wrote a letter to the federal judge that will sentence him. And in that letter, he wrote explicitly that the government was pressuring him to lie about then U.S. Senator Barack Obama and then Governor Rod Blagojevich. He made it clear that he wasn't going to submit to their pressure, and he said that there was no wrongdoing between Obama and him and no wrongdoing between Obama or between him and me. Tony Resco, in that letter, expressly told the sentencing judge there was no wrongdoing with regard to what he did with me or with Senator Obama, notwithstanding the pressure that he was under by the government to lie about the two of us. Now you have Chris Kelly, who was sentenced after he acknowledged his wrongdoing. Now you have Chris Kelly saying, and I should say, acting as he did, taking his own life because he refused, he refused to take a lesser sentence to lie about me. I have it on good authority that he was offered a significantly reduced sentence if he was prepared to lie and say things that weren't true about me, yet he refused to do it, and as a result, he took his life. And then you have the matter of the tapes when the government goes out and says after they arrest a sitting governor at 6 o'clock in the morning where his little girls sleep. Unprecedented. I'm a former prosecutor. You don't arrest anybody.